Hey Tactical Painter, welcome back out to the Suits Crafting Woodshop. We're out here in the shop today, going to be working on a customer order. We've got a Gold Baron Fountain Pen Kit. Uh, so we're not doing a rollerball today, we are actually doing a fountain pen customer order and he ordered a piece of Cocobolo to go with this. And so he saw the photo of the Hawaiian Springs fountain pen that I did a while back, one of my first videos that I put out me doing woodworking out here in the shop. And he saw that video, loves the Cocobolo in it, but wanted it in a barren fountain pen for a friend of his wife's that he's going to be giving it to. Stick around, I'll show you how it's done little excerpt the gentleman that i'm making this for is actually the contractor that helped me move the wall in the shop so this is a very special uh part of me that's going to be going into this pen because he helped expand the shop that we're going to be working in and so i am absolutely excited to do this pen for him so thank you so much for the order and we'll get this done up for you so the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how we want to orient our pen together so I see there's a nice little feature something going right there that a uh, little bit of a highlight and some the grain patterning is a little different uh, in that spot doesn't look like it goes all the way through but there might be something kind of exciting right there and let's see I don't really see much else the grain on this is kind of curves inward and if you look here on the back side there is a little bit of a uh, up and a swoop and it comes back down right there See up and then swoops back down. So there's something going on inside. You can see it's got a wave here. So we want to use this area right where that up and swoop is. So I think we're going to set up, let's see, yeah, I like that. So we'll cut our top here, we'll cut our body here, and our end here. We will get a centering bit set up in the jaws. Now this is the longer section, so this is the body of our pen, 2564. So now we get that drilled. All right, good clean entry hole. Good clean exit hole, no chip out or scarring. Looks good. On to our cap. Now our cap is 15 30 seconds. Another 30 second of an inch and it will just be the maximum size of my jaws, which is a half inch. So it's a very big bit. All right, let's bore this out. Good clean entry hole and a good clean exit hole. Looks fantastic. All right, let's get these tubes glued into this Cocobolo blank. Uh, we're first going to have to rough up these tubes because look how nice and shiny those puppies are. And they aren't going to do us any good for adhesives adhering to the tubes. So we're going to get those roughened up just with some 100 grit sandpaper. Okay. Now we'll just take some thick CA glue and we'll get this a bead put around here and then we'll get these glued into the tubes. And we're going to put that in our center so we find our concentricity line. We know that this is going to be where the center band is so we'll keep the tube close to this end when we glue it in. Have our activator and we will just seal that in place just like that. Now on to our second tube. Put 
push it in from this end. Now I've got just a waste block of oak. Ugh. Oh no. And that glued right into place immediately. I made one error, and that error was I sprayed activator too close to the piece that I was about to glue into, and the glue set between the wood and the tube before I got the tube all the way in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bit that I originally drilled it out with and I'm going to re-drill out that brass tube and get as much of it out as possible. Okay, so we definitely drilled that brass tube out. I definitely do not see any remnants of brass tube left inside of there. Definitely does look like I got it all cleaned out. So I'm gonna grab a barren tube from another kit that I've got over here on the side and I will get that glued into this one and then we will salvage this blank. So again, same process and procedure, just take my uh, stolen barrel from another kit and I'll roughen that up and then I'll roughen up the whole thing just with some 100 grit sandpaper just like the hut. Put a good healthy amount of CA on there and we'll just push that in. All right, we'll hit that in with some activator. That'll be good to go. Fill it in with a little thin CA. Hit that with a little activator. We'll let that set overnight. And we have saved this blank. Got this Coca-Bolo blank chucked up and ready to go on the mandrel. We're going to be doing this on uh, 3700 RPM. We're going to get this spinning, cut this down with my roughing gouge, which I've got sharpened up right here. We're going to just go ahead and get this going. I'm not going to have a whole lot of commentary throughout because I am going to be wearing my respirator. This is not a very good data video. Alright, so we got this little bit of finished sanding left to do just to bring it down to the bushings. We're pretty close on both ends. Just gotta refine a couple of areas, we're just gonna do it with some 150 grit. There we go, now we're at the bushings. We'll work our way back through the grits, getting rid of all those scratch marks we just put in there. And then we'll work on polishing. Alright, time to polish this bad boy up. Because this is Coco Bolo, this thing right now is seeping oil because the polishing process heats it right up. So we're going to let it sit. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to remove some of the excess oil that has seeped out and get rid of all of the extra um, sanding powder and stuff that's collected while we've been doing this process and get that out of there. That way this oil doesn't 
lock it in tight as it cools back down and goes back into the grain. And we just clean a little bit of that extra up. And you can see all the oil collected on that patch. Just a little denatured alcohol I'm using here. It gets that all nice and cleaned up. And gives us a little bit of a sneak preview as to what it's going to look like after we polish it. And this is going to be a gorgeous pen. I'm looking forward to this one. This is going to take a really nice polish as Cocobola always does. See it's still seeping all that oil out. So we just rub this a little more, get some of that more oil off. A little bit less on that one. It's not as dark, but still seeping out quite a bit. So we'll let this cool down. I usually leave it anywhere between 20 minutes and an hour. Uh, and then uh, once that's all cooled, we'll wipe that off again with the denatured alcohol and we'll, then we'll apply our liquid finishes. Okay, so we've let this sit for a couple hours actually because I went inside and made dinner for the family. And uh, so now I'm going to go through. We're going to wipe this off, any of the oil that's left still on the surface. There shouldn't be much. It should have all seeped back into the blank. So we'll just see what this does. Yeah, not a whole lot, just a little bit that's left on there, not quite as much as there was earlier. So we'll do this on the other blank too. Yeah, still a little bit left. So we'll just do this one more time. A little more denatured alcohol. Get that cleaned off the rest of the way. And there we go. All right, let's get some liquid polish going on here. Now we're just gonna apply a little bit of sand sealer to this. Don't put it on very thick, otherwise you will end up with glob lines that you do not want and are hard to get rid of. Just two coats like that should be good. Okay, so we're just gonna put a little bit of friction polish on here. Do that a couple more times. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of Dr. Kirk scratch free. We'll just get that little micro scratches and things from the buff marks taken care of. Alright, I will just finish that up a little bit of Renaissance wax. We'll put on four or five layers of this. This stuff's real simple, you just wipe it on. And then you just let that sit there for a few minutes till it fully dries and uh, hardens around the wood. And then you just come back later and you just buff all the excess off. Alright, so this is sat for a few minutes so we're just going to buff this off and uh, clean it up. Then I'll continue to go through put more layers on and then I'll meet you guys back at assembly. That looks nice. Alright, I'm going to do that a few more times and I'll see you guys at assembly. Alright, so we are all ready to assemble this gorgeous Cocobolo Baron Pen Kit. We've gotten gold. This is going to be wonderful. I absolutely love Cocobolo with gold finish. It looks fantastic. With a roller ball, you can just immediately jump in and not have to worry about really how the and, or how the nib is going to lay out. With this one, since it's a fountain pen, you do have to worry about how it looks while you're writing. So in order to set that, we just take our nib, we take our end cap off, or our protective cap off, we take our coupler, we put our band on it, thread our nib in, And now we make a decision. How do we want it to look while we write? 
That part's awfully dark. I kind of like the lighter look of that right there. You kind of see... I like how the end grain, or how the, the, the grain meets down there toward the point. I, I think that gives me a nice effect. Kind of leads up to the point of the fountain pen nib. We'll make sure that our fountain pen nib is tight in there, which it was not, so we actually have to adjust that just slightly. There we go. Now it's perfectly lined up. So we'll just kind of press that in a little bit. Unscrew our fountain pen nib. And then we will press that in. All right, just double check our good fitment here, good look. Yeah, it looks fantastic, just like that. See how that looks? Grain lines up, so then when you're writing, you'll see that grain facing up towards you, and then you'll also have this nice side grain here facing in both directions. So I think that looks the nicest, just like that. Yeah, look good. Okay. So the next thing that we have to worry about is that we get our grain lined up. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take our center band and assemble it. And it goes together just like so. Then we will thread this onto our body and we'll find our grain line patterning here. We'll get this lined up and it lines up just like so. Make sure we get a perfect alignment. There we go. I think that'll be good right there. Remember, it's not going to be a perfect alignment because this piece of wood is larger than this one. So you can only just kind of get it approximate. So I've got that pressed on. So we'll go ahead and unscrew our body from here. And then we will press this piece in place. Get a spacer put in there. Make sure we really drive that home. Alright, so now we'll check our fitment. Oh yeah, perfect alignment. Look at that. It's almost like we know what we're doing. It's fantastic. Okay, so now let's find where that un where that comes undone. And that's where we'll set our clip. Okay, so it's right there. So if we put it in just like that, that gives us good alignment. So we're going to put our clip right to that point right here that way you can go straight into the clip and it will align every time okay we're gonna put that clip face up so what I'm saying is is that if we put the clip right here go to put your pen away you just line your tip up with your clip straight in twist and you have perfect grain alignment every time. Don't have to guess, okay, which point do I go to? Just straight into the clip, just like that. So we'll press that in. Turn it a little bit. Drive it home. All right, one last check. Perfect grain alignment. Absolutely beautiful. All right, now all that's left is to assemble our post. So we first have to press this little tiny piece into this post cap. 
And we do that simply like so. And then this can thread into there, but first we need to press it into our body. So we put the coupler ring onto our coupler, place it onto our body. Now for an added touch, you don't have to do this, but for an added touch, you can thread this into your cap first and then decide how you want it to look when you place this onto the body. So you can line up the grain because you have dueling grain. You have grain going in one direction and then grain going in the other direction. So you can actually line this up so that way it kind of looks like it's meant to be that way even though we know that it's not. But it does look good like that still. So we'll press that in place just like that. Take that off and press that in just like so. Thread our post cap on. Thread our nib on. All right, double check, straight in, twist, perfect alignment. And that pen, my friends, is done. Absolutely gorgeous pen. I'm gonna be giving this to a customer paying bought and paid for this. So just pull that out. She'll be able to write with it, put it away. It's gorgeous. If she decides to, she can always place it onto the back of the pen as well. And that just it's a beautiful thing. If you've never written with a fountain pen, it really is a treat. Absolutely wonderful. And there's one more topper to this. He also requested to have a nice box for it. So we also picked up this trapezoid box that this is going to be gifted into. So that opens up like so. Pen sits in just like that. And then it closes up. Very nice gift box. Absolutely love these. They are beautiful. It's got walnut ends and then maple in the center. Pen sits nicely inside there just like that. These are absolutely lovely. I love these boxes. Or with these pens, real simple in order to fill them with ink. You can either take a cartridge just like this one that comes with it. You've got this tapered end right here and you just take that and you jam it onto the needle that's down inside the center of there. Just jam it in place straight down. It'll puncture that and then you'll be good to go. You just thread that back into your body. You're all set. Or you can use a reservoir. And how you fill this is you take the reservoir and you actually just press it in place onto that same needle. But this already has a hole built into it. And then you just take this whole contraption just like this. Thread that all the way down. And you buy yourself a bottle of fountain pen ink and that you're not using like a calligraphy uh, dip pen ink because that can be too thick. It has to be a fountain pen ink and then you just take this nib, dip it straight down into the bottle, you go all the way up past this point here where you have a little shoulder in the nib, in the, in the handle, see that little shoulder, go up past that shoulder and then you simply unthread that out and then that will suck up ink through this channel into the reservoir and then you're off to the races you can write you know all day with all that ink I go about a week and then I have to refill these are great little reservoirs they work really well every once in a while you do have to take the nib out of the body of the pen and just kind of advance it forward a little bit and then you're off to the races again I only have to do that maybe once a day just advance a little bit of the ink forward you don't have to go a whole lot just enough in order to push a little bit of the air that's trapped inside while it's sitting upside down in your pocket. You just advance that forward, get rid of that air pocket, and then you're off to the races again. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful pen though this is. Get you one last look at that. Beautiful pen. 
berry kits have got to be one of my favorites to do. They're absolutely beautiful pens. It's nice, lightweight, balanced. It's a little bit smaller, I think, than the Junior Gentlemen's are, but these are just a lovely pen. Real nice. Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so that way you can be notified of any of my future videos coming out. And as you're here, go ahead and check out some of my videos here on the left and on your right. This has been Suits Crafting, signing out.